Uh, but the key point, point in here, there's the talus bone. The talus bone is the center of gravity. That's where the center line of gravity has to come through. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that for you first. Going to set it. Okay. Okay. Now to set it, you don't need to manually manipulate it. What you want is the ligaments that are attached to the, uh -huh. from bone to bone. You want those to position because that's the that's the uh, that's their job. That's their job. Wow. And this is a union job, so okay. nobody's going to stick in anybody's way here. Okay. So all we need to do is hold. And what you're going to be able to feel, and I, what I'd like you to do is actually comment on, on yeah, how Yeah, I feel, feel, you know, just pressure where your, it feels like your thumb is on the bottom of my foot, and now I feel like it's like, like releasing. Right. And that's, what that is, is the ligaments wow. actually repositioning that talus bone. So they just wanted to go there, it feels like. I feel like no resistance. Like they just wanted to go there and there they went. That's exactly how it works. That's why muscle release therapy is different than a lot of the other therapies. What it does is the therapist initiates uh -huh. proper movement and then allows your brain, your subconscious brain, to reposition it. That's amazing. So now when we do that, we have Oh my gosh. A much better flexion. Yeah. Now, in order to stabilize this, the whole foot, you uh -huh. have the calcaneal bone or the heel bone. Right. Okay. Yours is actually shifted to the left. Okay. All right. So, so that's so not good. That's not good because if you've got the center line of gravity, and that's probably the way the talus bone was coming, mm. if you have the center line of gravity and you're, you're here and your, your, your foot is still rolled, that bone is going to go back. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold on and we're going to let that reposition. Once again, this is allowing the ligaments of the body to do okay, the reposition. Okay, so again, I just feel like a little bit of light pressure near what I would perceive around my Achilles tendon, but down a little bit lower. And then it, it feels like you're moving it. Yes, and well, the, the camera will show. <laughs> that, okay. That is you. Wow, it just feels like you're taking it and you're moving it along. Yeah. Uh, now that's and not, again, it feels like you're moving it. Yeah, and then we're not moving the leg. That's actually the, the, the way the, the ligaments and the tendons are lining themselves up. Oh my gosh, that feels so weird. So now, oh now we even have much more mobility. In the it feels like I've never felt that joint before. Like, when did that get there? When you were born? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if, if you watch babies walk, when they're first learning to walk, yeah. it, it, it kind of like they're picking up. They do. Okay, and they yeah. bend their knees. Yeah. Okay, as adults, we sometimes forget that because we're always in a hurry. Oh, yes. All right. Now, there's flexors and extension muscles that go through the bottom of the foot. Okay. All right. So what in muscle release therapy, what we do is I just, I, I find all four of them. We put you in a nice dorsiflexion. Oh, they, so they, they stand out. And all we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to stabilize them in the calf muscle or in the calf region. Oh, that sounds important. So it's more like a, okay, stabilizing, connecting, solidifying. Mm-hmm. So you're actually doing something there. We're actually doing something. It feels like we're not doing anything. That's exactly right. It feels okay. just very relaxed and a bit of, a bit expansive. Okay. Like I feel like my foot just relaxed a bit. It, and it is. All right. But you should also feel something else going on now. And now it feels like it's moving. Yeah, I feel like you're moving my calf one way and my foot the other. Wow, it feels really good. It's hard to explain. Yeah, you should actually... Now it feels like you're elevating my leg. Like you're lifting it up off the table. Are you lifting it up off the table? No, I'm not. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's what it feels like. Oh, that's so weird. Oh wow, and I, f I feel more like up further on my leg. Yeah, should be going up towards the knee. Now. Yeah, the, the knee, and then up toward my thigh and on the sides. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 
Okay, now when people talk about having stress in their body, uh -huh. the body doesn't know the difference between good stress and bad stress. It just knows that it's under stress. And stress is actually a metallurgical term hmm. that shows where there's a, a, a weakness, a, it creates a weakness. So when you have this kind of stress uh, situation in the, in the soft tissue, any stress that's added to the body, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, uh, whether it be physical or mental, will have an adverse effect and will uh, have an accumulative effect. Well, that's um, what we're seeing then. So when you see somebody with fibromyalgia, right. you're dealing with both not only a physical stress, but a emotional or mental stress. Wow. And when you combine the somatic mind uh, combination, that's where the fibromyalgia individual really suffers. Hmm. So traditional treatment is uh, antidepressants mm -hmm. and painkillers. Mm -hmm. Or right. sometimes the injection therapy. The, the, what are those PowerPoint, and, not PowerPoint? Trigger point. Trigger point. They do trigger point yes. injections. There's 18 trigger points in, in most mild fa uh, fibromyalgia or myofascial pain syndrome people. There. That is so weird. I felt like you're moving my leg all yeah. over the place. You should notice now that you actually have free movement in your ankle. Okay, like I, if I compare the legs, this one feels more alive, I guess I would say. This one feels a little bit dead, and this one feels like... It's alive. Yeah, it's full of pep. <laughs> what can I do with this leg now? <laughs> well, we'll we have run, a, run, run, run. We're going to put you in the Pilates studio later. Oh, gosh, okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is your lumbar spine. When the pelvis is shifted, mm -hmm. with the way your foot was on, on the ankle and mm -hmm. the... Uh, the uh, calcaneal bone and the heel bone, your pelvis has to shift to find a, a, a center. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, when it shifted, it didn't take your full lumbar spine with it. Ah. Okay, because the lumbar is trying to keep the upper body. Oh, that's its job? Because what the lumbar does is it sits on top of the sacrum. Right. All right. And the, the sacrum supports the spine. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is if you have one part of your body shifting to the right, mm -hmm. there's got to be a corresponding shift to the left. Because the body's seeking balance. It's seeking balance. Mm -hmm. So that's where that lies. Smart body. Okay. Body is pretty intelligent. Isn't it? Yeah. So all we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to place our fingers on the lumbar spine. Okay. All right. And that's, that's all we're going to do there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is... The adductor muscles or the inner thigh muscles act as puppet strings on your pelvic bone. Okay. So what they're doing is they're pulling the pelvis to correspond to the ankle. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing, they're shifting the pelvis. So what we're going to do is we're going to find that uh, puppet string. And I'm going to do that by, I'm going to pulsate on your spine. Okay, I feel that. Okay. Doesn't and hurt though. What you're going to feel is also a pulsating under my hand that's on your thigh. Okay right there if you feel right by my fingertips right there yeah ever so slight yeah, it's a very slight uh, we can yes. increase that if we'd like uh -huh. so what we're going to do is we're going to take tension so we're going to move that adductor muscle uh -huh. closer to the pubic bone or the pelvic bone and we're going to just hold that and once again now what we're doing is we're reversing actually the whole uh, motor sensory perception here in tensegrity uh, normally we move from the ligaments to the muscles. Mm -hmm. Here we're actually going to move from the muscles to the ligaments because I can't access the ligaments. So we're going to reverse this. So by holding this, mm -hmm. you're going to start to experience something and it's starting to happen in your lumbar spine. It feels like it's relaxing. Like, it feels like you're moving it. It's. It's going. It feels like it's going like this. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, oh my gosh, that was like a huge release. Yeah. What this is going to oh, do? Wow. It's going to allow your cerebral spinal fluid to flow freely. I felt like right down my legs, both okay. legs. Okay. Ooh. Nerve energy and blood. Mm -hmm. That blood thing at your foot—that's a good thing. It is. Oh my gosh. Okay, and there it goes down. This is the puppet string. So what we're doing is going from the muscle mm -hmm. to the tendon. The tendon then it reverses all the uh, neuromuscular sensory objects and it's creating the motor movement 
into the ligaments now. So the ligaments are actually repositioning there. Now your spine is actually coming towards me mm -hmm. and your leg is starting to relax even more. Yeah, it feels like yeah. you're yeah. moving my leg. So when movement stops, Mary, I'm done because your body has moved it into position. So you're in constant communication with the body. Right. You're, you're, yeah, yeah, we work, the fascia is a, is a, it's a completely interwoven three-dimensional system through the body. It actually starts in the dura mater by the brain and ends in the feet. Mm -hmm. That is where all your sensory nerves are. So by doing that, we do myofascial release. We do a lot, we, we talk about the fascia a lot, but the fascia is an avascular substance that, that is filled with collagen. So there's no blood flow. So there's no blood okay. flow, and the, the collagen acts as a, uh, the, the piezoelectric uh, entity that allows the electrical energy of the body mm -hmm. to dissipate and go where it needs to go. I would think that'd be very important that electrical energy needs goes where it needs to go. Needs and we know that. We know we're an electrical system. Right. We, that's not a surprise to anybody in any field. So. That's so great. that's basically where I started out, by positioning, and the, the fascia encapsulates these muscles and tendons, mm -hmm. it encapsulates mm -hmm. all the organs of the body, all the cells of the body. So when you, you get that, you get the multiple movements, and that's why my hands don't move, but that's the movement you're feeling, is that fascia like realigning everything that it encapsulates. Like it, like it was supposed to be there the whole time. Right.